you, you move where you're comfortable. <laughs> oh, are you sure? <laughs> well, you hit yesterday. Just give us a synopsis of what you saw yesterday. It is all situational stuff. <clears throat> uh, we've tackled twice. Uh, what's this, practice nine, I believe. Um, I think it's nine. Practice number nine. How about that? Uh, we've tackled twice. <clears throat> this will, will be uppers today, so we we'll still hit. Um, <clears throat> just won't tackle. You know, so yesterday we tackled, had uh, some situational stuff, which I like a whole lot more than they like. They want to put the ball down and play football, <clears throat> you know, and try to put a drive together and all that. I'm more interested in teaching them situations, you know, third down stuff, what you do on specific fourth down, um, you know, coming off, that sort of thing, uh, two minute, four minute. Um, I like putting them in as many of those situations as we can to learn from it, coaching staff-wise and uh, player-wise as well. So <clears throat> I, I, I like the practice a whole lot more than they did. Um, you know, they, we'll, we'll, we'll do a uppers today and back off of them tomorrow and then tackle again on Tuesday, uh, which we'll start letting them drive a little bit at that point. So it's more teaching than it is, you know, evaluating probably. I was happy with it overall, though. Coach, looking at the linebackers, are you any what concerned about having enough quality linebackers going into the season? You don't think we're any good there or what? No, I just wonder if you think we're That's kind of how – that's how the, that's how the question was geared. I, I changed it then. Do you feel like you have enough quality? At the it's linebackers? the same question you just asked. <laughs> it was different. A couple not weeks. really. Not really. Um, well, we you start with David Long. Uh, we didn't have him a year ago at this time, so having him in camp is – has elevated our defense in general. Um, you know, he was our defensive MVP last year, pretty much. So, um, you know, having him is an awesome start. He he looks as good as he ever has. Um, you know, it, it makes a whole lot of difference. I, we we can't block him, but, and it, it gets frustrating to have things drawn up to where he's accounted for and he still makes the play. That that's good news for for our football team. Uh, Tonkri looks he looks really good. Um, you know, he, he's he's another starter that we got uh, in position that ha that's coming back from having a whole lot of experience. And then we got a bunch of young guys on top of that. You know, uh, you know Charlie Benton's looked good. Extra low, you know, has looked good. <coughs> um, you know, and then and you you got some you got uh, you got some some guys on the sidelines that have come back here at some point this year to be able to give us some help as well. So. Um, you know, they're, they're, the, the backups are inexperienced, and, you know, our job is is to not only get the, 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 the starters to play at a high level, but to have the backups be able to go in and, and hold things together as well, and I think we're on our way to doing that. Anything on the situational versus just putting the ball <laughs> down and playing, is the change in that a little bit just because of the differences in the way you practice now, or is it because you think – you get more done in the situational versus just playing. You got to teach them the situational stuff. You 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 want a combination of both. You know, we're we're tackling, we're having less tackle days than I have in like a decade. You know, usually we have eight, ten days where we're going to tackle. Uh, we're you know, there's that's ample time to be able to get as many different situations as you want and. You know, allow them to be able to put the ball down and, and, and drive as well. Uh, we got four this year. We got half as many as <clears throat> as we've had. So, um, you know, you, you, we, we focused on the, on the situational stuff the last two days. You're still going to get situational stuff in those put the ball down and scrimmage days as well. You're just not going to get as many of them. So we're teaching them what these situations are, and then we got to put the ball down, play it, and then you get into those situations throughout the course of an actual scrimmage, which we will do Tuesday and we'll do on Saturday as well. Jake talked a lot about in situation <clears throat> third downs, you guys weren't as good last year as you wanted to be. Is on offense, big, not yeah, defense. Uh, certainly. But yep. is that a big emphasis of what you're doing in this situ it situation? Is. Stuff? It is. <clears throat> yeah, it is. And then, you know, you know, just the maturity of, of my decision making, um, you know, working with Jake and then Will as well. <clears throat> there's a lot of areas of the field where, you know, if you just get half of what it is, then you're going to have another opportunity on potentially fourth down. We got to figure out what our range of our kicker is, uh, you know, where Billy feels comfortable pooch punting, that sort of thing. A lot of things go into it. So we're just working through some of that stuff and, <clears throat> you know, working on the kicking game aspect of it as well. So. 
Um, and there's no better way to do it than put the ball down and play and see what happens. So I think we got better at it yesterday and feel good where we're at. You know, defensively, we were really good. Defensively, we were really good on third down last year. Didn't mean we were good on defense. We were just good on third downs. What's ironic about it is <clears throat> bad on offense, good on defense. Fourth down is just the opposite. Really good on offense, bad on defense. You know, so they were, we were putting a lot of fourth down situations out here the other day as well. <clears throat> if we can merge the two, you know, then, then, I, then we'll be where we need to be. Overall, you happy with where you're at? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with where we're at right now. Um, you know, the energy's been good. You know, work's been good. You know, it's, this is the hardest part of what our camp's going to be right now. You know, we only have three more days of camp, and then school starts. You know, so <clears throat> I tried to have a long day yesterday, and, you know, everybody's sore today, but we got to get up and we got to get a lot of work done, and then the next day's got to be the same thing, and the next guy's day's got to be the same thing, and then we got to shift gears a little bit, you know. So I'm, I'm happy up until this point. It's a whole other animal when these kids got to go to school. You know, and then getting them to show up here in the afternoon after going to school and refocusing them on continuing to get work done. And then we get into a game week situation that's practiced prior to a game week situation, which is the real deal. So it goes fast, you know, and it's going to be upon us before you know it. So at this point right now, I'm, I'm good where we're at. In a roundabout sense, what's the difference what you do offensively if you have two slot receivers versus a slot and a tight end? <laughs> well, we're we're... I mean, we're, it, there, there's differences, clearly. I mean, it's an extra gap in the run game. Um, you know, so the blocking schemes are going to be different. We can call the same, the same run play, but it's a different scheme based on an extra gap and where somebody's aligned, <clears throat> which always means the defense is going to align differently as well. So, uh, but with that said, you know, we can call things the same thing. It's just that we got to identify what the fronts are and, you know, how many are in the box and who's accounting for who. I mean, it can change slightly, but, um, you know, a lot of the pass game stuff can stay the same. A lot of the run game stuff can stay the same. Just minor tweaks as far as how we're accounting for the extra body and, 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 and who on our, you know, who on our on offense is going to account for that. It doesn't always – it's not always the <clears throat> tight end that's accounting for that extra body just because he's in the backfield. I mean, it can change all kinds of fronts and stuff. So. You know, I, I like the extra gaps and the tight ends and stuff because it allows you to kind of scheme some people up a little bit as opposed to it just being spread offense the whole time. Being as multiple as you guys can be, how much of it do you take into any given game? <clears throat> well, pretty much all of it. Uh, you just can't have you can't have a whole bunch of presentations on the same offense, you know. I mean, you just change things up from week to week based on what you feel like you can do and what you feel like you can handle. Um, you know, we got a lot of offense. Um, you, you can't be good at all that stuff. You can't practice all that stuff. So you just got to try to focus on what you feel like you can handle. Besides the <clears throat> on the team, what has Jesse Bill brought so far in the limited amount? Yeah, he's learning the game. I mean, there's there's a whole lot of examples. I mean, Brandon Whedon didn't do anything for Oklahoma State for two years because he was he was getting back in the swing of things. Very, very rare uh, is it that those guys just, just – pick up where they left off, whether it was junior high or high school, you know, so he's learning. He's a good kid. He understands it's a it's a it's a little bit of a process for him. He's I, I've been excited with him due to the fact that he hasn't just gotten frustrated, you know, because it's everything's just so new. I mean, I've dealt with so a couple of baseball players. I've dealt with a couple of basketball players that come over and try to learn the game. And just because you look the way you look doesn't mean you know how to do anything. You got to start with teaching them how to get in a stance because they don't know how to get in a stance. They don't know what a five technique is. I mean, so um, good kid. Glad he's here. He's got a long ways to go. Dana, how has Boyas responded after a year he self-admittedly would like to forget? Good. He, he's, he's been out there every day, so that's a start. You know, he, he's been one of my, my, my senior leader guys that I'm kind of leaning on a little bit. He's in a leadership role. He knows that. He was, when he played last year, he was one of our better defensive players. Uh, just you know, had the injury bug last year. Not a whole lot you can do with that. So, you know, eight practices into it, he's he's had really good work and like where he's at. Dan, are kid, coaches' kids different <clears throat> when they get here than, than other kids? You've talked about <clears throat> this before. Yeah, evidently, yeah, they are. Obviously, they are. Uh, I've, I've got a soft spot for those kids. 
you'll see my kid running around here all the time. <laughs> that the point is, is they're just always around. So they they always see things, they hear things, they probably see and hear things that they shouldn't at that specific age. Um, I remember Logan coming to me back in 2011. He snuck to the way in when Kurlav was down over there and he came back and his eyes were really 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 wide he's like dad i go you know i know i didn't say you could go down there now but they just they hear a lot of things they see a lot of things they absorb a lot of things and when they get to a situation like this there's not a whole lot that they can't handle i know the players aren't focused on this but with your analysts and all that and getting ready for a completely new set of people at tennessee <laughs> yeah. how important is that and how how early do you guys dig in on a level that the players don't see yeah, the, the scouting report is done. It's been done for about a month, you know, so there's a book on my desk. I haven't looked at it yet. There's an offensive book on my desk that thick and a defensive book on my desk that thick and a special teams book on my desk that thick of, of just as much information as they've been able to gather. Um, it, it's going to be valuable on Sundays after a game. Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, the first game we get two weeks. I, we prepare for our opponent two weeks before the first game, which is going to be a week from tomorrow. So when we come in a week from tomorrow, it's going to be an off day, and we're going to I'm going to open that book, <clears throat> and we're going to start diving into it. Uh, it it's going to be it's going to it's going to save coaches a lot of time, but you know, there's going to be a lot of information in there that we probably wouldn't been able to get if we weren't if we didn't have somebody. You know, that was constantly doing it all summer and throughout camp as well. Do you find the guys bring their system or do you, they change personnel? Because, I mean, obviously the, the guys Jeremy's working with at Tennessee aren't exactly the Alabama crew and vice versa on offense. Yeah, he's, Jeremy's a good coach. I mean, what good coaches do is is they, they take a little of both. I mean, they take what they believe in and they implement it, and then they take what they have and they kind of merge the two of them. So how much is – going to be 100% what they do and 100% of what they need to fit to the players they have, I don't know yet. We'll do our best to try to figure that out. Interesting first yeah, it always is. It always is. And, you know, even last year, I mean, we had a pretty good idea what Bud Foster was going to do <clears throat> and, and what Fuente was going to do. And there's still some that some new stuff mixed in with it that you got to kind of figure out. That's, that's first game anywhere anyway. <laughs> yeah, hey, let